Hi everyone, here's another data visualization critique, this one of a really nice piece in the Washington Post about the Israel-Gaza war. Obviously not taking uh, position here, not gonna talk about uh, position on the war itself, but just to dive into the data visualization. So I want you to focus right away at the very beginning here. I'm actually gonna zoom all the way in into this little illustration. Even from all the way out, you can see, let's go all the way back out, you can see that this is not your standard map. This is some kind of hand-drawn or at least hand shaded maps. So zoom in here and you can see we've got sort of you know hand drawn this sort of scribble here with Gaza and Israel obviously typed out, but the rest is sort of scribbled, which is gonna be an important piece of this. So let's scroll down a little bit. Um, we have a story about uh, a 14 year old girl uh, uh, living in Gaza and we can see the photograph turns into this, I would say sort of a ghost type image so this is a big question about icons in data visualization. How do we represent people in a fair and equitable and meaningful way? And it's really challenging because we don't always know who people are, what their experiences are, what their identities are. Um, you know, uh, uh, people with disabilities is a good example. Should you represent people in wheelchairs or not? Is just one example. These, this is a complicated thing. And there's a whole literature on what's called anthropographics, which is a hard word to say, but it's basically how do you represent people in icons? And I thought the Washington Post did a really interesting approach here. So you can see here, we get into this sort of kind of ghost-like scribble, uh, um, I don't really know how else to describe it. And then you can see as we get down here, we have a lot more of them. Now, I think the 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 ghost the, the ghost word is a good uh, uh, word to use here, descriptor to use, because we are talking about death and we are talking about, in this case, children. And so I think that's a, a useful way to, to, to describe it. Um, and so it's a question, again, that we wrestle with when we are trying to use icons in our data visualizations. Now, as we get further down, we can see that they have moved away from those specific images of the scribbles to more sort of these, these lines. And even if we zoom in, which I'll go as far as I can, you can see that they do feel, they do seem a little more hand-drawn, right? They're not, they're not strictly vertical, right? Some of them have a little bit of a slant to them. So again, I think that's a nice approach when creating this sort of visualization uh, uh, when you're trying to represent people. Let's keep scrolling down. You can see we have some uh, specific annotations around some people in this group with some uh, additional photographs. We'll keep scrolling here. And as you can see, now we get into the actual sort of more quantitative data. Um, but again, maintaining that basic hand-drawn look. And I don't know if this was built in uh, P5 or in processing or, or literally hand-drawn, but I love the way this is all stitched together and still has that same hand-drawn effect. I think it's really powerful and really well done. Um, and you can see, again, we have these sort of little icon uh, charts as we go down. And as you continue, you can see it's very consistent all the way through uh, this particular visualization. We end up down here with a scatter plot, duration of the conflict versus number of casualties, and you can see these, these uh, drawn circles here around with the text. So I think just a really well done piece from the Washington Post, obviously dealing with a very serious topic, uh, a very difficult topic for many to talk about and, and to discuss, but from a data visualization perspective, it's one of those questions we have about how to represent people. How do we represent children? How do we represent each individual in our data. And we, I think we often struggle with what type of icon to use. And as I scroll back up to this particular approach, I think this is a really nice job of sort of extracting or abstracting, I guess is the right word, abstracting from that particular case because you are still getting that sort of silhouette of a person, but not worrying about the specific look, the specific uh, outline or designation of that individual. So I'd be curious to hear what you think about this approach in the Washington Post. I'll put a link to it in the notes below, but check it out and let me know what you think.